So guys, we're gonna talk about how to use my character creator. Uh, so the first thing you wanna do um, on a new project is of course add the character creator. I just have to refresh this because I just updated it, right? So once you open it, now the character creator come has a lot of options in it, right? So you could use it a couple of ways, right? So don't pay attention to genders, races, hairstyles and colors just yet don't worry about that these are only used if your game needs it um but you don't have to touch this if you want to use the other features of the actual um character creator right so if i go ahead and open up the categories this is where most of the settings will actually take place right so here you can pretty much set whatever you want right so for example, let me just get rid of these ones. Let's use gender for example, right? When you open up gender, it will ask you what you want that category name to be. I mean, I'm sorry. When you, uh, let me just open up a new one, right? So when you open up a new category, it's just gonna give you the name. So we could call it race, right? right? And then it's gonna ask you the variable ID. This variable is the variable that changes depending on what option you pick, right? So let's say I pick variable number one and call this race. And then options is the options that you have to pick from. So let's say, for example, we have humans and you have elves, right? So those are your two different options. So what that means is when the inside the actually, let me show you, let me delete this one, right? So inside the game, when you pick your race option, right? If you pick humans, the variable one will be one. If you pick elves, the variable one will be two. And then at that point, it's up to you to do whatever you want, right? So let me just show you exactly what that is doing. So if I talk to this guy, you will see the race and you will see humans and elves. If I pick humans, the variable one, if I press F9, you could see is now one, right? And then if I go back here and I pick elf, that variable will now be two. So what I was originally doing is pretty much making this so that parallel process. All right. So now you could do something like this, right? For when I'm a elf or for when I'm a human, right? You could change the graphics um, since this is parallel. Pro okay, there you go right so you could do things like that so that's the core part of the character creator right you're able to have a list of options that you could pick from and depending on what option you pick you could do something with that option right just like we showed in the example right now the next level of the character creator which does what i just did for you so you don't have to actually manually do it um yourself as long as you provide it with all the images for all the different variations you have, you'll be able to achieve the same thing with changing the visuals of your actual character using um, the character creator, right? So let me go ahead and just paste all these things back. Give me a look over there. Okay, so now that everything is um, back here, let me go ahead and explain the other um, part of the plugin, right? So you have your gender, your race, your hair type, and your hair color. If those are categories that you have um, that you have set, right, then you'll be able to use this, right? You'll be able to use the genders, the race, the hairstyle, and the hair colors option. But if you do not have these set, then you don't have to worry about the rest. Like let's say, for example, your game is just to have a starting location or like a starting item or something like that, but you don't really want to use the visual aspect of it because you want to have one character and you already have a specific way that they look and you don't want to change that. This is what you would use this section for, right? But then if you add on the gender, the race, the hair type, and it has to be typed exactly like, um, like you see them here, right? So the name has to be here, capital H, capital uh, C for the color. And that's for the hair type, the race, capital R, the gender, capital G, no S, right? So now let's go to the other categories. So you have genders, right? 
So all this is telling you is the two different prefixes of the files that you want to use to, okay, before I actually get to that, let me show you the file. So when you come down to gender, the races, the hairstyles, the hair color, actually um, skip the hairstyle, gender, races, hair colors, they're all pretty much set up the same way. So for example, if you go into gender, you will see how it says name, male, prefix, male, right? And then here, you also see the same kind of um, setup, right? Male, male, right? The ID so much doesn't really matter, right? But just make sure you increment the IDs. So pretty much what this means is, it's going to match up whatever that gender that you have selected. So for example, if we go back into categories and we go into genders, you see how it says male and female, capital M, capital F. If we go back into genders, the name has to match that name and convection. So whatever you have the, the names at, you have to make the names the same here. The file prefix is the prefix of the file. So for example, if you go here, you see how it says female, right? And if you go to here, it says female. And then if you, I'm trying to find the male, there you go. There's a male, there's a male, there's a male. So that male right here has to match. And the file names has to be typed together like that, right? So if we go into races, you will see the prefix is human, alakai, elf. So if we go back here and you will see alakai, right? And then if you look at these other files, you will see the humans. Let me find them. You will see humans, see? They're all named the same way, right? And then the elves, right? So these are all just telling you, hey, the name of the race that I want you to target is called elf. The file I want you to use is called elf, right? The file prefix I want you to use is called elf, right? The hair color is the same way. So as you can see, is black, blonde, red, white, or for the default color, you just leave it blank, right? So for example, the default color is, I believe the green one. So as you can see, it's elf female and no color. So it will use that for the first color that's the default, right? And that default is if you don't pick um, any other colors, it will, it will default to the green one, right? And I believe that actually matches up with, give me one second, gender, hair color. Yes, so the default is the first option, whatever you have um, as the first position. So it will just be the default, right? And then the rest will be the color that you, the name will have to match. But for the first one, only for this, not for the other ones, but only for the, for the hair colors, right? The default is this, the green one or the, what, whichever one is in position first. So for example, if I change this to the black one, then it will kind of mess up because now it won't be able to find green because I don't have anything named green, right? But then when I pick black, it will actually use the green one because the green one is the one without the prefix. So cancel that. So the four is how it slices the, the, the sprite sheets, right? So that's the different hair colors you have. So if we go back in here, I mean, not the different hair colors, the different um, hairstyles, there we go, right? So it's four different hairstyles. So one, two, three, four, right? Don't worry about the fifth one. The fifth one is just when they're knocked down, right? For all of them, it's only for when they're knocked down, right? So the hairstyles are actually these four um, sprites. You don't have to include this one. This is just for what I'm going to be using later. You just need the first row. So the first hairstyle, the second hairstyle, the third hairstyle, the fourth hairstyle. And that's what this four here represents. So if I have it as two, when it's doing this whole calculations, um, it's only gonna pick, you know, the two hairstyles. But again, you wanna match this number with the actual number of hairstyles you have, because if it doesn't match, it's gonna be weird. Um, So that is it for you know, setting up the character creator. So let me kind of give you an example, right? So let's say, uh, okay, also to call it, right? You could use a plugin command, ED5 character creator plugin, and then just open 
the plugin so you that's the only option you have here so you just pick it oops you pick it you click on it you hit okay then when you go in game you just have to activate it some way right you could pick these right pick so and also how it works is when you pick an option for example hair color it will go down to this menu then you could cycle through which ones you want go back do this right and then keep in mind that all this is doing is setting these variables um we're probably not gonna see it because hold on let me just fix something real quick oh no it's trying to um change it for me but i don't have those um characters in there uh, but it's okay so pretty much all that does is change the variables and then depending on which pictures you have for example if i copy this up this is two frames so if i set this right if i set this right so if i go to here and i pick male and i pick elf male okay and i pick race and i pick an elf and then I pick the hairstyle doesn't matter because it should include all of them. It's not going to include all the hair colors. It's only going to include the first one, right? As you can see, my character changes to that guy, right? So it changes to the guy that I just put in there. And then if I change it to Alakai female, so let's change race, gender, female, as you can see, now I'm that race. So the uh plugin just does all the little thingies for you so you don't have to do that for the um how their parents look but for giving them items and stuff like that you have to handle that on your own um this one more thing so character creator now also includes um an npc generator so let's go ahead and show you how that works to be honest i kind of forgot because I, I made it because someone requested it so I never actually used it um, in my own game and I kind of don't remember how it goes. But NPC, avatar included, blah, blah, blah. So all you really gotta do is, if you wanna change all event pages, right, to a randomly chosen one, you do this one, right? And you could do no tags or comments. The no tags, when you put it in the no tags, it will change it for all the event pages, right? If you do in a comment, it will just change it for that particular event page. This one persists that means when you leave the map and come back the event will be the same or if you reload the game this one does not persist that means every time you leave and come back the event will change to another event right so let's just copy this and again these are pretty much the same thing this is the only um comment only that's why i did that but anyways npcc you add it here come save oh there's actually some setup you have to do right let's go back to this go here now this one of these guys should be random now there we go whoa wait same guy again same guy again what's happening be a different guy there we go as you can see we got some random guys coming up some random guys they're coming up most of the time as you can see we got random npcs they coming up guys npc is random all right let me add this guy to the mix you know i have actually never tested this with multiple files like this and all it really needs to do is include the name it doesn't really matter where you put it but try to put it at the end just so you don't mess something up so as we're loading it should not be adding the people from i think this girl is from there yep yelp but let me make sure it's still adding the people from the first one still yep yeah. So that's pretty much how you use these um, plug, how you use this plugin, right? And if you want it to persist again, as in like when you leave the map or reload the game, you will use this one for the no tags, right? But if you want to use it, to, if you want to use, so let's say for example, you want a specific event page to not have the random effect, right? And you wanted to use whatever you set here, you can still do that. All you have to do is use this plugin command. I don't know why it closed it. Use this plugin command on that event page and it won't be affected even if it has these options in the note tag or even if both of these exist in that same note tag. I mean, not note tag, comment thingy, right? So comment to stop that page and use the default whatever you have on the left, right? 
And that's how you use my character creator. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, hopefully this was in depth. Um, I try to cover every little thing I could ever, I could think about. Uh, here on the right, so the male, the race and all of that. This is just the stats of uh, the class, right? So that's just the, the stats of the class, right? The name, the stats. And then if you look here, right? This is just the, whatever is in the notes. It's just reading whatever is in the notes of the um, of the class. I am gonna be restructuring the code and doing some other cool stuff with it. So stay tuned. If you don't have it, uh, I recommend it. It's pretty simple, straightforward. All you really have to do 